So I'm here with Brian Metzger from Nashville, and we are talking about this really awesome video that he put together about using flow simulation to understand the effect that face masks have. All right. Well, let's talk about your findings here. Um, you know, before we actually get to the effectiveness of the masks, and before we get to using flow simulation, you need to have a model. That's one of the biggest challenges. And then once you have a model, you can run a flow simulation. And then after you run the flow simulation, you can interpret it and make decisions. Right? That's just the typical workflow here for a simulation product. Tell me about the the model. It looks really awesome. The first thing I noticed was, A, that looks just like Brian Metzger. Tell me how you got your face inside of SolidWorks. Yeah, so uh, it just happens that my two focuses at Trimax Solutions, the two products that I spend all of my time on in the last several years are the simulation products like Flow and the Artec 3D scanners. I've got the Space Spider here with me that I used to uh, generate that model. Uh, that's actually I used that this that morning to iron my shirt, Brian. What's that? I said I used something like that to iron my shirt this morning. Yeah, they, they do look like uh, household appliances, but this is a metrology grade 3D scanner. Um, it's so small and portable, and it looks like it's just got, what, one cable, two cables coming out the back? Yep. It's got a USB cable that goes to the computer so I can use a screen while I scan, and it's got a power cord that goes to a wall outlet. Um, these things, you know, you pull it out of the box, you plug it in, and it's ready to go. Um, and it's a little bit tricky. Uh, here I've got uh, that scan that I took of my face. It's it's a little tricky to to scan your own face. Uh, just show me how. Show us of, show us how you did that. How you how'd you do that? You yeah. just you literally so held gonna, it up and did that. Let me back up here and make sure I've got the camera in the right spot. Let's see. So scanning the trick with scanning people, and this is challenging when you're scanning other people. It's even harder when you're scanning yourself. Uh, you're taking eight frames a second with the space spider, and as you move around it's matching up those frames to each other. So it's actually really difficult to get a human body not to move, right? You have to hold still as well as you can. So when I take a scan and I'm moving around, I'm gonna do my best to just hold still. And this will just be a quick example. I won't try to do my whole face, but uh, here we go. It's gonna go into a preview mode. When I start it up, do I not have this hooked up? Edit this out, student. Oh, I don't have the other end of the USB pit. Cable plug in. That's important. There we go. All right. So I'm going to try and hold still, and I need to maintain a consistent distance while also keeping my face as still as I possibly can. Obviously, it looks very difficult. It'd be helpful if you had someone else. Um, I'll kind of narrow it through here. It looks like you're just basically spray painting your face and covering your face with all those flashes of light. And the light is what's building the actual 3D scan on the computer. And as you paint your face, you make that model. And that took what, three to five seconds to make? Yeah, you actually Maybe want to move as fast seconds. as you can. Now I'm, I'm missing you know, the undersides of my eye sockets and my nose because I didn't get up from underneath. Uh, this was just a quick example. But right. what you're seeing here, if you take a look at all the frames, is it's kind of matching them up to each other as I move around. Oh, that's get, so cool. That's um, super easy. I, I cannot believe how easy that Artex scanner is to use. Like, yes. I love this spray painting analogy. It's you just paint your face with that ref refracted light or structured light. It, and, exactly. And I'll, I'll jump over to the finished version here. All that data gets tied together into a single object and we bring it in as uh, what we call a mesh, a tessellated mesh. Uh, it's just made up of little uh, small triangular surfaces. If you zoom in here, you can see all these little uh, kind of triangles. Yeah, look at that. Come together to make a watertight mesh. And then what's cool about the Artec scanners, uh, which has applications all over the place, but they are taking in full color data so you can make photorealistic renderings. Like and it's even one. capturing the five o'clock shadow. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I thought it would, you know, I've got this. I thought it would be right. fun to bring that over into SolidWorks and use that for my flow simulation. But it should yep. be said, anybody who wants to try this, 
in uh, SolidWorks Flow, you can absolutely just download a model of like a mannequin head off of GrabCAD and do the exact same thing. As far as the analysis, you would get pretty much the same effect, but I've got this, so I I decided to use it, right? Right, I mean, that's great. So, okay, you got your face. That's really awesome to see that in SolidWorks. Now, the second aspect of this is the, the face mask. Can you mm -hmm. just really quickly walk through how you modeled the face mask? I, I saw the in the video, it looked like just um, two splines, boundary surface, thicken, Easy, right? Yeah. Um, so I've got this mesh that you know sits in the SolidWorks model, and the way that we model a lot of uh, geometric shapes off of scan data is just by taking two-dimensional cross sections, just identifying a plane and taking a planar slice, and the software can turn that into a sketch, and then I can use that to generate a simple spline. Now, when I did this, I wanted to represent the imperfect fit of these cloth masks. I've been uh, fogging up my sunglasses every time I go out walking, and I wanted mm -hmm. to see that in the simulation. So that my spline here is just kind of a rough uh, eyeball fit. Just real, real quick, if you could for us, can you just draw a, a spline similar to that, mm -hmm. um, just to, to show them? Um, yeah. And then you can just exit out of the sketch after you do that. So let's just yeah, just do a new sketch, just show them, you know, you grab the spline tool, right? And there's multiple types of splines, right? This is just a, a regular spline. You also have the style spline. This one is really straightforward in terms of just drawing and tracing the shape. Style splines yeah. are great because it gives you more control as you're doing it with the control polygon. And then you can just basically take those control handles, spline handles and shape it, right? Just meshing it, Brian. Exactly. I'm not meshing it, molding it along the the shape that you want. So that's how that's how it looks like you did that. Yeah, just pretty, just trying to match easy. it. And I wanted to show an imperfect fit. Uh, the the cloth masks, you know, they do uh, they do leave gaps, especially around the nose where my face dips in here, uh, yep. and I wanted that to be a variable that I could play with. Yeah. So thank you for for showing that. Um, yeah. What the hardest part, I mean, the reason you can do that and just trace over it is because you're technically reverse engineering a mask. You don't need to know dimensions because you're just drawing something over your face, which yeah. it is pretty cool to be able to do that. And now you basically are just what, taking the cross sections and connecting them yep, with the taking, boundary surface. I, you, you can do as many of these as you want. If I was doing something uh, that was an engineering shape, like uh, you know the blade of a turbine, I might take you know 10 different cross sections all the way down to match the geometry really perfectly. Here, I just wanted something that uh, seemed about right. So I just did two of them and I connected them, added some direction controls in the boundary surface, and I yeah. got this surface body that could then be thickened into a solid body. Okay. And I mean, the cross section of met method and then, you know, connecting cross sections is, is pretty common in, in boat hole design and in, in um, in airfoils, in, in wings, um, you know, turbines, all sorts of different applications for that. That's a pretty common technique to create pretty cool looking shapes. Yeah. So the then it's a surface and then you thicken it up to what, five, 10 millimeters, something. This one is five millimeters. We, uh, we'll talk about that later, why I went so thick. Uh, that has to do with, uh, some of the circumstances in the flow simulation. Um, I was going to say, we, you know, we could, you know, engineering parts, things that are, you know, extrude, cut, revolve, that sort of thing. We talk about being prismatic geometry, stuff like you were talking about, bolt holes, airplane wings, uh, turbine blades, the technical term that we use internally and what, you know, that's used in places like SolidWorks is swoopy. These are swoopy geometries, right? Highly technical. Yeah. So this is not in any way a perfect fit. It's not symmetrical, it's not um, idealized, but you know, it, it got the job done and it gets me to where I can use for a uh, for a flow simulation. It's gonna represent geometry that the air has to go through. I'll use this as a porous media that air can okay. go through, but it also provides some pressure resistance. So we'll move on then for part two which is going to be the flow simulation. So stay tuned for part two of this.